Well, it's another day. It's another visit to the unit. Now, um, my, my aim for the day is to get at least one of the rear hub nuts hey, um, undone on Ellie the 2CV today. I, I have a big scaffold bar. I have a 44 mil nut, mil nut. Well, I think it's an inch and three quarters, but I think it's the same. Um, so that is the plan. But once I start ripping the rear brakes apart on Ellie, she's a mobile and can't be moved. And she's currently um, very nearly blocking in stuff. So um, I think that's a good enough excuse to um, first of all have a play and see if we can get this pair running. Uh, Myrtle the Matiz, Fox Anne the Fox. And um, just to give them a chance to get out, um, get uh, up to temperature, uh, rotate the tires, uh, look a little flat on Myrtle the Matiz. Um, I, I have no plans to get either of these cars on the road imminently, but you know, be a decent idea to just at least assess them. So uh, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So first of all, I'm going to move all this rubbish. I'm going to take stuff off Foxan because this is the problem. Once the car stops moving, it becomes storage. That's uh, very much happening with the Tercel here. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can't get some of these cars to fire up. Mind you, you can't um, start work on a car without a cup of tea. And this is a Foxan mug, fittingly. We have Foxan mugs. I believe we have Foxan t-shirts, if you'd like. So um, yeah, support Hubnut, support this little fox um, by buying lovely merchandise at hubnut.org. Oh, here she goes, little Foxanne is here. Let's have a peek at the water level. Oh, that seems to have dropped a little. And we'll top that up before we do anything. Uh, oil is down here. Oh, looks like it where, where it should be, so that's all good. That hasn't settled after many months parked up here, but it's never going to settle. And um, we'll just get the water topped up before we fire her up. Yeah, it only took about 100 mil just to get it above the um, fins again. You don't want to fill this. That is kind of the expansion part um, is this um, top of the rad. But I've um, got the level back up looking a bit healthier. Um, let's... Get the battery terminals on, as well as they ever did go on. I still haven't sorted this one out. It's still 100% dodge. And then I'm gonna remember where I've put the keys, my pocket, so we can unlock the door. One hopes, maybe isn't that key. We need to have several of these little keys. That felt a whole lot more wholesome. And if we chuck her in neutral, apply maximum steering lock. There we go. Steering lock apparently doesn't work. Uh, what do you reckon? Do you reckon she's going to pull out past the Matisse? No. Might take a few goes at this, but I can at least reach the wheel now but I'd rather have a with a clear run to get out before we go starting her up indoors back the other way now I'll go back as far as we can before stuff starts going bang that's about it oh it's like having power steering look so at least I know Foxanne's tyres haven't gone flat. Oh. And now she should come out. There we go. Beautiful. So now we can actually put the key in. If I can remember what I've done with the key, did I leave it in the door? You saw me, where did I put the key? Hel helpful. Now did I lock the driver's door? I didn't even shut the driver's door by the look of it. So straighten that up again. And I'll push her a bit further forward. All right, we'll see if she starts.
great success. Well, frankly, you wouldn't really know she'd been left part of for months, would you? That sounds pretty good. I've got a bad exhaust blow on the downpipe down there. That's why she's chuffing a bit. You can hear it if I put the microphone there. Very chuffy. But yeah, built oil pressure quickly. Sounds good. And brakes. Oh yeah, they feel a bit um, rubbish, to be honest. Uh, let's try a in reverse. Yeah, those brakes feel very dead. It feels like I've got air in there, to be honest. Oh, oh, maybe the brakes felt a bit better that time. Cleaning them up. Alright, so just come back down to the unit because the uh, windscreen is filthy. Do the washers work still? Oh, oh yeah, sort of. Most important test you can do on any car really, isn't it? I think the springs are a bit weak on the arms, but um, just check the fan. No idea if that was working or not. Lights, main beam, indicators. Yeah, all, all sounds good. She seems to basically be functioning. I'm going to go for a bit more of a drive uh, about the place. Well, we just had a good run um, up the um, private ahem, track and uh, yeah, she seems to be running well. The brakes are definitely um, uh, not on the great side, but then to be fair, the rear is full of everything, including a didgeridoo. So uh, there's a fair bit of weight back there, but uh, nonetheless, She's up to temperature, seems happy enough. So that's good times. Clearly charging nicely. Uh, oil pressure is not connected up, so don't panic about that. Uh, good times, this is still as disgusting as ever. It hasn't miraculously cleaned itself, but um, it's okay. Um, if I can survive that, then coronavirus ain't gonna get me, is it? Now I know for a fact that Myrtle's not gonna behave quite as well as that because she's got an utterly dead battery but I've got my jump pack with me uh, I might have to move this huge box out first though that contains my computer that's the hard drive or the rather the um, desktop that was doing my video editing before I went traveling at which point I had to buy the ThinkPad uh, from Lenovo uh, which a lot of you spotted the box last time that's not here that's at my house uh, I'm tempted to take this with me today actually just because it'd be really nice to have the desktop it's got my full photo archive on it and it might be good just to check everything's all right and do a let it do a backup so I might do that depending how the day goes oh much to, su to my surprise there was a click uh, as I uh, connected the battery up Oh yeah, but not enough juice to start. Let's get the jump pack. Right, once again, the little iClever jump pack uh, that I reviewed some time ago is in place. There's fuel pressure. Oil's idle still as rubbish as it was. Uh, some problem going on in here, I think, in the ICV idle control valve. But we can take that off now. Well done, iClever Pack. You have do done your thing once more. Really has been a very, very useful thing to have that. Right, let's get her out because she's doing that catalytic converter horrible stink. Uh, into first gear.
into reverse gear. Gonna have to do that again, I think, because I've got stuff near the door. Oh, you know that Lenovo box? I think I just ran it over. Can it idle all over the place because it's responding to the load of the power steering? There we go. And now Myrtle comes blinking into the light. In fact, I'm just going to roll her forward again, because, uh... Oh, the crusty brakes. Need to wash the muck off. Look at that. Myrtle always had good wipers. They don't come that high up the windscreen, is my only complaint. Could probably fit a bigger blade, but that's the size she had from new. I don't want to run the risk of getting a Triangle of Doom now. We've still got no interior mirror, because it fell off. Uh, I'm making use of this temporary one. I had in place for the best part of the year. Yes, annoyingly I can't find a bottle now, but every one of the cars before I put them away had a fuel stabilizer from Liquid Molly added. Um, this isn't science, I can't prove um, that it made a difference, but I do know modern fuels go off very, very quickly. And uh, I seem to have got all my cars up and running with no trouble at all, no coughing and spluttering. You remember. Ellie in particular, I took her off the road one winter and she was never right after that. It took her ages to um, sort herself out. Myrtle's gently revving up and down outside at the moment. Um, but yeah, maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, but I think I'm quite glad I did it. So thank you to Liquid Molly for supplying that. Oh, it does feel nice to be properly waking the fleet up though. That's it, every vehicle has run since I got back now. It's my own fault for putting up that Suzuki Cappuccino video the other day, I fear. Oh, three cylinder goodness. There we go. We have heat. So we'll get Myrtle back in and parked up. Sorry, Myrtle. That was your lot. So I'm whistling away still. I've had the um, auxiliary belt replaced. But it might well be the power steering pump. Right, I'm gonna get her back in place. Right, well, I think that's enough scope creep for one day. Um, time to start on Ellie. Uh, I, I need to get both rear hub nuts undone, but I'm gonna start on the near side one because that's the side that the wheel bearing's gone on. My plan is to get the drum off, take the drum to a 2CV specialist, let them fit the bearing, and then I've just got to come back and fit it and all should hopefully be well. I don't have a centralising tool. I'm hoping I get away with not needing one. Uh, but if you don't centralise your rear brakes, then you get honk, honk, honk when you're driving, which is really irritating. Uh, but uh, that will be the first port of call, I think. So we'll start by pulling off these little caps but covered in nuts. This is, um, there we go. Uh, Ellie should have a chrome hubcap, uh, but I, I never bothered fitting them uh, because I couldn't be bothered because they're just annoying things. And if the captive nut goes, um, that holds the wheel trim in, it's then a sort of a job to get the wheel off because you have to get the wheel off to access the other side and stop the, the bolt just spinning. So I, I think better off without them. Uh, it seems to work for me. So we'll crack those nuts off. Then we can jack her up, get the wheel off and have a go at the um, the 44 mil hub nut. Right, stage one, outside are these nuts. Oop, I need to put that brake off because wrong with the bit. Fortunately, I left my um, travel toolkit in the GSA. So I've got my breaker bar, extendable breaker bar. So this should do them. Oh yeah, there we go. 
just about get on that one. Quite a few miles um, since these were last off. There we go. All right, I'm going to switch to the um, extension bar. Should be able to whiz them off. Yep, there we go. Voila. Oh, almost. Right, now the jack. Always have a check, make sure it's jacking in a good place. Yep, right on the axle bolts. And then with 2CV, you just have to keep on jacking. And jacking. and jacking almost there we go, here we are in the air we'll get some stands alright, we need one stand under the car. Go right under the shock absorber tear. Let that down a little. There we go, but we'll leave that in place as an extra security measure. So I sound like I know what I'm doing. Well that's off. Obviously I've forgotten to put my gloves on again. That's just the sort of video I am. I haven't had lunch yet, so it's going to be really, really tasty. I'll bring you up a bit. And uh, yeah, see what's going on. Now you know I set the handbrakes on. Uh, handbrakes on the front wheels on a 2CV. Which does mean of course you can just undo the wheels for doing that. Knowingly, I think we're just between points. And we seem to have too much height. Oh well. Right, uh, next thing is a thing to get the thing off the thing. And get the dust cover off. There we go. And there is our nut. Uh, you'll notice it's peened over there. So um, let's try and drift that out. And then it's the job of trying to get this nut off. It's going to be fun times. Like an impressive combination of the wrong tools for the job. But... Yeah, I'm just going to get behind that a bit more, I think. Yep, something pointy here. Okay. I'm pretty sure I got the right tool out and I've managed to lose it. That's uh, impressive and very, very me. A narrow punch and a harder hammer. No, I think I'm going to have to sacrifice a screwdriver on that myself. Well, I don't think it's going to get a lot better than that. Now, uh, let's see if this socket actually fits. Oh yes, it does. Uh, I need the jack out of the way and then my very long scaffold tube and we'll see what happens okay. 
Alright, place bits now. So whether this is gonna actually work. That's a bit more height than like that. Let's try there. Oh, that's unexpected. Ooh. Ooh. We have movement. I was expecting that force to come down on the wheel. But no, it appears to be um, going up. The nut. It's turning. Happy days. I've got a new nut to go on, although you can use nuts twice. Uh, it is permitted to allow them to uh, be used twice, apparently, but unless I've got new ones. Yeah, those rear brakes don't sound pretty good, but it's the. Uh, Specifically the, uh, oh I need to knock the adjusters off first don't I? It's the uh, wheel bearing that the MIT tester didn't like. So, yeah these drums aren't looking in great condition. Oh sorry about that. Anyway. That would have been in the sea. Right let's back the adjusters off to get the wheel off. Right. Oh, come on. Oh, you have to wonder about the brakes. There we go. Oh, we're off. Okay. Meat on those pads, that's good. I've got new wheel cylinders to fit anyway, uh, but uh, the adjusters seem very stiff, so I've got to try and lube everything up as best I can anyway. But um, inside the hub here is the wheel bearing, but you've got lock rings and uh, bearing pullers needed. I'm going to say that isn't a job for me, but that is a horrible looking brake drum, if I'm entirely honest. I need to get wire brush out. Clean everything up, I think. No, I've just been chatting to John over at Peak 2CV and he reckons I've got the shoes in wrong. And that um, this bit here should be up the top. And similarly on the trading shoe. So uh, I was hoping not to have to disturb the brakes, but uh, I fear I may have to. If things aren't where they should be, then I'm gonna have to have it apart does mean I can free off the adjusters this adjuster was or is it yeah it is that one very very sticky um, and that's not ideal you need your adjusters to be moving nice and free and easy so uh, we'll have to do something about that uh, I think the best thing to do at the moment might actually just be to repeat the performance on the other side and um, the other side being the side I need to change the wheel cylinder on um, I did get two wheel cylinders I don't know whether it's worth changing both or not I'll have a ponder on that maybe get some more advice but uh, that's probably going to be it for this one um, uh, I'm not going to film the other side as well um, because that's simple enough but yeah I might just crack that nut off get her sitting on the level and uh, we can see what we do next time uh, here in the unit uh, I've got other jobs I could be doing today. I've actually got a rear wiper unit for the GSA. Not sure how to make it work yet. I um, need to check if the wiring's still there. So I might go and have a look at that. And uh, that'll be a separate video. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'm going to wrap that one up. So um, we'll get back on the 2CV project once I've got the wheel bearing fitted. The drum I've just put in the back of the GSA to take away. And uh, hope we can get that done. Now, there's all the little jobs I need to do this this blooming door lock but wouldn't work on the MOT test um, that feels like it's in the yeah it's in the lock unlocked position but it's not opening the door so I need to take that barrel apart um, I've done that before and the old barrel removal need to do that I need to go through the electrics make sure the lights are actually working properly and then we can present it for an MOT 
I have to pay for a full retest, unfortunately, because time limit has expired on um, a retest. Because uh, I've spent like two weeks trying to ponder what to do. But apparently that was the answer. So that's good uh, news, I guess. So yeah, I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell.